You know, I don't know why people keep requesting this. It's a biscuit, big whoop. But that doesn't mean that we can't make it so astronomically better than it's on a completely different existential plane. Okay, so today we are making the Red Lobster Cheddar Bay Biscuits. Now, I've done some research on them. To me, they look like cheddar biscuits with like potentially bay seasoning, potentially chives and or other seasonings. It's a very basic thing. Because of that, we're not only going to just make these Cheddar Bay Biscuits and make them better, but we're also going to make arguably one of the greatest lobster sandwiches that's ever existed. It's gonna be a little bit different, but um, I'll just stop talking and let's make this, shall we? Thank you for calling Red Lobster. You're welcome. Your call may be recorded for quality and training purposes. Like it just rings like brrr. Your call might be recorded! Are you calling to place a new order that will be picked up today? Yes. Your call may be recorded so we can serve you better. There's so many layers. If you would like to pay at the time of your phone order. I just want biscuits! <laughs> Finally! Your estimated wait time is less than two minutes. There's a wait time? Yeah, it's uh, Joshua Weissman. They're like, oh, biscuits. Is it possible for me to just order a bunch of to-go biscuits? Okay, bye, love you. She didn't say it back. Okay, we're pulling up to Red Lobster. Oh, we're stopping aggressively. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. I've never been so unexcited. Safety first. This means last. The lady at the front was so nice and I very much enjoyed her. So if she's watching this video, I love you. But it's the scariest to go area I've ever seen. It literally looks like you're walking into a jail cell with a kiosk in it. There was no one there. There was just like this water overflowing in the back. And the funny thing is I wasn't scared or nervous, but I was sad. So we've got the box. Why does it smell like pee? Here it is. This is what it looks like. It doesn't look bad, although it's pretty soft. It's more of like a bread. Oops, scummy. They're not bad, they do taste good, but for one, I don't taste any cheese. I don't taste any Old Bay whatsoever. Look, they just taste like normal biscuits. They've got like a little bit of cheese on top. They're soft and they're salty. I get why people like these, they do taste good, but they don't deserve the clout that they have at all. So I think we should make something that is deserving of the clout. Making a biscuit is, and should be, a very uncomplicated thing to make. So we'll be paying our respects and keeping this dough home style. Start by combining two cups or 300 grams of all-purpose flour with one tablespoon or 14 grams of granulated sugar, two teaspoons or 12 grams of fine sea salt, two and a half teaspoons or eight grams of baking powder, half teaspoon or four grams of baking soda, one tablespoon or nine grams of garlic powder, and one teaspoon or four grams of onion powder. Some people say that they have Old Bay in them, but I actually didn't see those in the ingredients anywhere. Granted, you can add a teaspoon if you want. Whisk all that together until thoroughly combined. Now separately cut up half a cup or 115 grams of very cold unsalted butter into half inch evenly sized cubes. Pour your flour mixture into a food processor, add in your butter, and pulse four to five times until you get pea-sized clumps of butter. Then add one cup or 80 grams of shredded sharp cheddar cheese, pulse two to three more times to combine, pour that mixture back into your bowl, and mix it with about one cup or 240 milliliters of cold buttermilk. Try to avoid adding the buttermilk all at once. You know, feel the dough out. You wanna get to know this guy. But most importantly, you want it to hold its shape and not be too overly wet and sticky. Pour your dough out and knead until it comes all the way together. Dust that bad boy with flour and roll it into to sort of a circular or rectangular, not really sure what shape this is, and fold one side to the center and the other side over that, push it lightly together, then roll it out again lengthwise in the direction of the seams, and repeat that letter folding process one last time. Then cover your dough with plastic wrap, give it a personality and a respectful name, and toss it in the fridge for about 30 minutes and up to overnight. Once you're ready to bake, line a baking sheet with parchment paper, then in a small bowl, crack one egg, and whisk together with a splash of buttermilk. Generously flour a work surface, plop your dough down, flour the top of it as well, then roll it out into a circle that's about three quarters of an inch thick. Using a biscuit cutter, cut out as many pieces as you can, placing on your baking sheet as you go. Now look, do not toss the scrap. Press it together and roll it out to continue punching out more dough until you ain't got no more scrap left, brother. Make sure to line those all on your baking sheet with about one inch of separation, then lightly brush the top of each of your biscuits with your buttermilk egg wash, then place it in an oven, set to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 Celsius for 13 to 15 minutes or until golden brown like these lovelies. They're glossy, cheesy, spiced up, and ready to taste. We have my refresh, mwah, mwah, mwah. and then they're, yeah. I mean, visually, this looks like a biscuit, and this looks like someone had to come in on their day off and they had to make these, but this is just how they look, like little turds. Oh yeah, let me tell you something. 
flavor, okay? Flavor, immediately, straight to the mouth. You got the garlic, you got the rich cheddar, the butter, real butter, not fake butter. And it's salty, it's got a little bit of sweetness. The outside is quippy. And it's actually got some chew to it. It's not just like soft, it's flaky. There's layers to it. This is what a biscuit should be. We'll let the taste testers decide. It smells like pee, doesn't it? It does smell like pee. There's a pee smell. Hot pee. <laughs> Don't be shy. You're being shy. Okay, number two. Ah! <laughs> I'd go with number one. This one would just had more texture to it. It had that chew that you were talking about. I enjoyed that a lot more. The takeaway is that if you're gonna be making this, always eat it fresh, obviously. You could still win, but if you let it rest and then you reheat it, obviously, the texture loses a little bit. If we're comparing the fresh made biscuits, from, what's this place called again? Red Lobster. <laughs> but it's gonna be so astronomically better if it's fresh. And obviously when you make my recipe. You know, I think we can take it even a step further. Lobster time. Okay, so they taste amazing and it seems that we've already won, for the most part. But let's take it one step further and actually add lobster to this. It is Red Lobster after all. For four people, you need about two to three live lobsters. Now hold on there, do me a favor and go learn how to properly dispatch a lobster using a knife. Do not boil them alive, all right? It's inhumane, it's not the right way to do it if you're gonna do it. Now if you don't feel comfortable with that, then just go to the store and buy four lobster tails. Anyway, toss your raw lobster pieces, claws, tails and all, into a pot of gently simmering water and let it simmer for about five minutes minutes till red and just cook through. Then immediately plunge your lobster into an ice bath just till warm and manageable with bare hands. You don't want it completely cold. Now work through all of your shells and do your best to pull out as much lobster as possible. A little trick that I learned was to make a small crack at the end of a shell and then continuously tap the shell and oftentimes the lobster will pop right out in one nice piece, assuming you simmered it correctly. Now once you've got your lobster, we're gonna make a simple bermonte. In a medium saucepan, add just enough water to cover the bottom of the pan, like around a quarter cup. Place it over medium heat and as soon as it gets steamy, steamy hot, but not boiling or simmering. Start whisking in half a cup or 115 grams of unsalted cold butter, starting with just a single tablespoon. Keep constantly whisking that in, reducing your heat to medium low till that's nice and emulsified. Then start adding and whisking in more and more butter until all of it is added and you'll end up with a nice emulsified butter sauce. Remove that from the heat, season it to taste with salt and the juice of one small lemon. Mix in half a bunch of finely sliced chives, then bring that up over medium heat just until very hot but not simmering or boiling. Chop up your lobster and add it and stir together with your Burma until everything is hot. Adjust any salt levels, then get yourself a sliced Cheddar Bay biscuit, top it with a fatty mound of lobster, finish with some more fresh sliced chives, top it with the other side of your biscuit, and enjoy a potentially never seen before or tasted sandwich. Honey, yes, I wanna eat it. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. This is the right kind of richness with a little bit of acidity from the lemon. You've got the chives, ultra, ultra buttery and rich. The sweet lobster. Honestly, there's nothing wrong with this. I'm sure that like lobster roll purists would be like, gosh, I can't believe you put lobster on a biscuit. If there's any biscuit that lobster belongs on, it's this one right here. It just makes sense. And because I love him so much, I'm gonna give him just a little bit of butter. Hey, thank you. It's good for your health, and since you just pooped, and you're gonna be ready to <laughs> you're gonna be ready to poop after this. All we've eaten today is Torchy's tacos, red lobster biscuits, my biscuits, and now this buttery lobster biscuit. This is a formula for how you say mmm and diarrhea. Mwah. So without further ado, Mr. Krabs. There you go. There's some crunchy radish in there. Yeah, it's great. It's so much better when it's like nice. That lobster brings it home. I'm gonna sleep after this. This is really yummy and it's a winner. And I'm sleepy and Vikram's sleepy, so now we go. We're gonna go to bed and we're gonna cuddle, okay? Bye. Bye. You wanna know what else is full of butter, cheese, and hot, steamy lobster? B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made the red lobster cheddar bay biscuits. And of course, we went above and beyond. We took some fresh lobster, poached that bad boy, tossed it in a chive vermonte, placed it on both sides of a biscuit, and topped it with more butter and more chives and a little bit of salt and a little bit of lemon. You put it in with your So good. It's just righteous. Obviously, that was inspired by a lobster roll. It's really not all that different from a lobster roll. I'm not sure how many people have thought of putting lobster on a biscuit, but I'll be the first to tell you right now that there is absolutely nothing wrong with it, and it is very very tasty, and I hope you get the chance to try it. I do film quite a bit ahead of time now, or almost a month right now. Maybe we have merch out by now, but possibly not, so if not, I'm very sorry. But anyway, with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.